Sound Waves with your hosts, John DeLuna, Brian Kilby, XV, Lady Rick, Dweebum, with Rob Springer. And John DeLuna, welcome, welcome to New Sound Waves 64. This is what we call... Ladies and gentlemen, a theme show. Ooh. It's, it's a yes. tribute. Yes, this is a tribute. This is a love letter, a massive love letter um, to the Nintendo sixty four on New Soundwave sixty four. So you're I saying this isn't the greatest here. podcast yes. in the world? This yes. is a tribute. Absolutely. And Rob, right. as you can see, if you're if you're lucky enough to see Rob <laughs> in the video, Rob is in his formal wear for a <laughs> Nintendo discussion. Um, mm-hmm. So with me uh, this week, uh, Rob, the aforementioned Rob, with his awesome Mario hat, um, XV, and Brian Kilby. Guys, how are you doing? Are you excited? Are you geeked up for this? Insane. I wish I had a Mario hat. <sighs> it took a lot of work on Club awesome. Nintendo. <laughs> and you said that had, that had instructions? Yeah, it's coming to instructions. What, what, are the, what do the instructions instruct you on? Let me actually read them. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm wearing the hat wrong. <laughs> Maybe it's maybe it's not meant for my head. It's well, that, that much seems like it might be evident. Yes, 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 <laughs> yes. So as so as Rob looks for the uh, instructions, um, but hats don't like, fit me well either. Like I said, we're going to talk all about the N sixty four. We're going to have a couple of news bits, a real real short news segment, and then we're going to get right into the Nintendo sixty four stuff. Um, Rob, I'll go through the news while you're uh, while you're searching for the uh, the instructions here. So, real quickly, um, some news of the week. Tomorrow, we're, we record New Soundwave on Wednesday nights, and Thursday of this week, so less than like twelve hours, they are going to announce the PSP two. Amazing! So, finally, yes, we're actually going to get official specs straight from Tokyo. Basically. What it's going to be is um, a PS3 in your hands, apparently. So they're claiming the rumors coming out of uh, Japan are that it's basically going to have the power of a PS3. Um, two sticks, two analog sticks, uh, 512 megs of RAM, quad-core processor, quad-core GPU, and OLED screen. So it's going to be a powerhouse. We'll just have What's to see it going to cost, like $800? It's going to cost, yes. It's <laughs> going to be, you're going to have to take out a mortgage. <laughs> And there's going to be, like, three games in 2011, but it's going to be really powerful. When was the last time this model... I heard someone say this. I'm sorry I'm stealing this. But when was the last time this model worked for, for uh, Sony? Let's produce the most expensive, powerful console that we can and see how well it sells. That would be uh, never. No, it worked with the PS2. It was uh, I guess PS2 sort of. of yeah. yeah. Was, the PS, was the PS2 the most powerful system by a good stretch? Of uh, no. When it came out, yes. Oh. Yeah, before the GameCube and Xbox were released. <laughs> uh, it was still more powerful. No, 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 it wasn't. It was, it, yeah, it, the, the GameCube was more powerful. But it, it, just, it demolished the Dreamcast, sadly. Yeah, mm. yeah, I know. It's really a shame. Mm. Hey, I Rob, you have your instructions? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, tell us how to wear a hat. All right. In there. Now, first I'm going to show you guys a typo that Nintendo made. It says, instruction manual. This is clearly not a manual. This is a slip of paper. That would be like an instruction leaflet. <laughs> yes. Mario TM hat handling and care instructions about the Mario TM hat. This item was designed to replicate the shape of Mario's hat and created specifically for Club Nintendo Platinum members. Please be aware that this item is not designed to function as a hat for practical use. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> Please enjoy this item as an interior accessory, a fun item while taking pictures, or to add to your collection of Mario-related items, like <laughs> Mario-related items. Interesting. Handling and care, cleaning and color loss. Do not machine wash or dry clean. As a, <laughs> do not wash this damn hat. Basically, <laughs> if color rubs on the clothing, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Maintaining. Do not pull too hard or handle roughly, as it may result in. Da- Stop using if becomes damaged. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, it was like we are, we're, we become aware that you people are retarded. This thing in sounds fact, like a all, dick trap. The nice. plastic wrapping that the item is enclosed in may cause accidents. Please store. <laughs> Why haven't I noticed this earlier? This is awesome. <laughs> it's so like, they mean accidents like wetting the bed or? <laughs> no, it's like nice. Nintendo had faith in all of us until all those Wii accidents came up. They're like, you know what? Screw this. You people are stupid. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Keep on keeping on wearing that hat, buddy. Go get it's not coming off. I'm going to work in it. 
So two more things before we get into uh, Nintendo 64 goodness. Um, Ninja Gaiden 3, the developer has come out and promised us that this game will be maddeningly, ridiculously hard. Um, After, yes, the first two Ninja Gaiden games, the modern ones, uh, have been ridiculous. Like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the NES, ridiculous. uh, No, 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 much worse. Well, I mean, much worse. They're not broken. The games aren't broken, but they are. Like I, I, I was able broken. to finish like, I driving was, nuts hard. I was able to finish Ninja Turtles on the NES. I was not able to get anywhere halfway through Ninja Gaiden. On oh, the, really? I beat yes. the first Ninja Gaiden, but that was it. I, I, on was the like Nintendo, summer, I did on the it, Nintendo, not on the Xbox. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the, the real one. G1 was up. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, the, 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 one. the one on the Xbox is insane. I can't yeah. come close. Yeah, the, the one on the point Xbox that it's not is fun. Frankly, kind of broken. Let's just be honest. <laughs> it's beautiful, but uh, yeah, <laughs> it's unplayable. Like it's uh, very difficult. No. Um, okay, so last thing before we get into Nintendo. I love the title for this one. Um, Capcom Smash. Yes, yes Capcom. <laughs> Capcom has thrown the hammer down on uh, the internet. So let's <laughs> take a step back, and I'll explain this because this is actually kind of a cool story. If you're not Capcom, <laughs> um, so Super Street Fighter Four. Um, has an arcade edition, and part of the allure of the arcade edition is it has at least at least four extra characters in it. Um, so the twins from Street Fighter Three: Third Strike, uh, Yang and Yoon, um, are characters that are just unlocked yeah. when you when you when the game came out. They were just standard characters. Um, also teased. So these characters weren't secret. These were characters we know were going to appear or be unlocked at some point are Evil Ryu and Oni Akuma. Um, those are both characters from past Street Fighter games, more or less. Um, the problem being, they were unlocked this weekend um, when they were apparently planned to be unlocked in May. Uh-oh. So Oops. what happened was, all of a sudden, all these American, this is a key thing, all these American <laughs> arcades all of a sudden had had these two characters on them overnight, and the internet went bonkers. There were live streams on Ustream and Justin TV of people just showing, like, just live recording and broadcasting the game. Um, all the gaming sites talked about it. And it seemed kind of weird that these two characters showed up all of a sudden and only in America. But we found out. Come Sunday morning, this all happened on Saturday, but come Sunday morning, we find out the full story. Um, apparently, the code that unlocks the characters was leaked or stolen or somehow got into the hands of American arcades and the American arcades were able to use that code because they are not connected to Capcom's online network, uh, the online network that would control stuff like this. Um, so they could basically do whatever they want. And when Capcom found out, they freaked out and <laughs> in, in legendary fashion. So Capcom promptly started sending uh, cease and desist uh, letters to websites. I've received those they before. St- they started. <laughs> they started pulling down <laughs> links on YouTube, and they started suspending accounts on YouTube. So basically, shutting people down. And uh, for a while, it looked like they fired Street Fighter's producer, but um, apparently, they just physically beat him because he disappeared <laughs> for a few days, and, and he just now like showed up this afternoon. Wow. Um, no worse for wear, apparently, on Twitter. Although, on Twitter, you can't see his face. So his face may be a wreck. Besides, um, if you asked him, he would just say he like walked into a door or fell down the stairs or something. That's right. Yeah, That's right. It was I an still, accident. I, st- I still love him. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't mean it. I never loved him more. <laughs> That's right. So, so, interesting saga from this weekend. Um, I guess it's a lesson for video game makers out there. If you don't want characters to get like leaked or broken from a game, don't put them in the game. Yeah. Nobody does <laughs> unlocked. Inf- Nobody does unlocked uh, characters anymore. That's probably why. So, uh, interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. And, and I'll keep you updated on that saga as it goes. Um, if you're, at, if you ask the question, can Capcom like take back these consoles, these arcade consoles? Can they? Can they? lock the characters back. It looks like they can't because these, like I said, these um, these games are not connected to their network. These characters have been unlocked. I'm sure if there are any more characters in the in the console and, in, in, you know, waiting to be unlocked, people are trying to hack them as we speak. Yes. Um, so so does Capcom, Capcom intend to keep issuing 
cease and desist and such from now until, you know, May or... Um, I mean, how is that going to proceed? If they're like any other big company, they're probably chasing their tails, figuring out what went wrong, who to blame, and how to fix it. And they'll come to the conclusion that there's nothing they can do. Fired the temp. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All the interns are just going to get lined up, firing firing squad. Um, So, anyway, yes. Tough week for Capcom. Suck it. So that brings <laughs> us that brings us to the Nintendo 64 extravaganza. Nintendo 64, Nintendo 64, Nintendo 64. Nintendo 64. Hey guys, you want to want to feel old? Yes. I, I uh, actually felt old like 2 days ago, but <laughs> the Nintendo 64 uh, debuted in 1996, yes. which was almost 15 years ago. Damn. Yes. Damn. After I graduated high school. Yeah, I was in college. And Damn. I, I bought mine with a with a federal Pell grant. Awesome. <laughs> At least I'm not the only one who did stuff like that. <laughs> well, Rob, remember our friend who ran Slagacon and funded that with his school loans? Boy, do I. <laughs> I'm so proud of that guy. That was so awesome. <laughs> We were going to, we yes, to Slagacon 2011. There's no way around it. I have to, because it's like, you are after my heart, because I can't tell you how many Transmetal 2s I bought with student loan money. If I have a car that has four wheels, I will make my way there. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so a little bit of history on the Nintendo 64. It was Nintendo's fourth console. Uh, uh, the, sorry, the Game Boy Advance Micro. Really nice. Yes. Sorry, I was playing Dig Dug. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. So if you haven't guessed, these are super geeks in your midst. So yes, it, it was the fifth console. Um, it was released, like we said, in uh, June of 96. Um, and then uh, that's in Japan and September of 96 uh, in North America. And then I didn't you know, get mine all around Christmas. I, I think that's typical. I mean, it came out in September, so you're doing pretty mm-hmm. good. It was the last, as we all know, the last arcade, the last Nintendo console to use cartridges um, for good reason, as yeah. we'll probably talk about. Um, there, were only, there were two launch titles, Super Mario 64, Tremendous, Pilot 64, Pilot Wings 64, not Tremendous. I never even played Pilot Wings 64. I rented it a few times, and it was, it was okay. I was kind of digging having something else to mess with the controller with, but... I, um, yeah. I recall, actually, my brother got his Nintendo 64 before I did, and... It was given to him by a stripper. Nice. Nice. That almost beats the student loan it thing. Beat, it does beat the student loan. It kind of does. Like, it's the kind of stripper you marry. <laughs> it's like, and it's like he didn't have any games for it until like sh- we got him Shadows of the Empire. Oh, okay. And he was like, my girlfriend got it for me. Is she a stripper? <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's just like, what's her name? Cinnamon? <laughs> <laughs> and then again, you're like, well, let's quit laughing. And you're like, holy crap, his girlfriend bought a Nintendo. That's awesome. Yeah. <sighs> and her name is Cinnamon. <laughs> Triple awesome. Okay, so, oh, if, and if you're being a picky, yes, in Japan, they had a third launch game, but it was like a Japanese board game. Does not count. Um, so, in, in, in its like lifespan, it sold 33 million units. Not bad. Uh, not, you know, World, huge. Worldwide, okay. 33 million. Worldwide, that's that, that kind of sucks. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. and here let's put the games in perspective. So, a total of 387 games were released, um, which sounds like a lot, except it's not. It's, it's really not. not. It's so, it's really not. 1100 games were released for the PlayStation, and um, for both the NES and the SNES, um, they had over 700, uh, 768, 725, respectively. So. Less than 400 games in your life, not so good. Not so good. And two of them are two are, two are, two are the same Castlevania game. So, yeah. I mean, if, so. It's a lot when you say, like, hey, CDI, but <laughs> it doesn't look like that. Um, one of the things about the N64, um, it was extremely diverse. So there were at least, at least eight variants on the console in colors and sizes, yes. um, including a dimensional Pikachu. That's yeah, right. I, I remember seeing that actually. Yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You probably have that. I, I think I don't. I, mm-hmm. I think the most uh, widespread one though was the clear purple. I think that was around for the longest of the variant colors. 
There was a green yeah, as well that, I mean, it was pretty common. Because I saw a lot of those. A lot of those. Yeah. I think I saw yeah. some of those yeah. around the same time Walmart had the $20 Virtual Boys. Nice. What a, what a great time to be alive. <laughs> 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 yeah, what a great time. Uh, oh, and also they had their share of limited edition controllers, which actually brings us that brings mm-hmm. us to the controller itself, um, which you could talk about for hours on end just by itself because it was so different and polarizing. Yeah, uh, uh, it was I mean, lacking I mean, all it the face was buttons. Like a breach. Uh, when it came out, I don't think people knew what to make of it, the controller. They didn't know if this was like, a terrible idea or if this was the future it's like you hold it right handed or left handed I mean well, it's this giant thing that has two buttons what do I do with this <laughs> and that third everybody's favorite the third handle in the middle yeah I, I think yes. it, I think it might have been better received if it had two more face buttons instead of you know yeah instead of that C button nightmare that was just a couple of buttons yeah it's like which C1 C2 oh damn it why isn't this just X <laughs> Or, you know, Nintendo, it was always uh, X, Y, B, and A. Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they didn't go that direction. Of course, they did add the Z button, which the Z button was the handiest button on the thing. But. What was funny is if you got, like, the say, a, button. you got, like, a ra- uh, racing game, and you're like, why didn't they automatically map the gas to the Z button? Why do I have to do this for every game? It makes so much sense. Like, no developer thought and said, Huh, that's a good idea. Not one. But what what racing game was on the system that was worth playing besides uh, F-Zero? Wave Race? Well, yeah, well, that, that, yeah, I guess that's a racing game. Yeah, I, I'll give that to you. That that game was amazing when it came. Yes, it, it it's still fun. It's still fun. And of course, yeah, Mario. It's Kart, not as Mario amazing Kart. as it was, but at the time, that was like pure adrenaline Mario and cartridge. Mario Kart 64 was also. Oh on the system. yes. Yeah, but you know it, the game was still you know the game is still hampered though by the fact that it, it was a console that had Cruising USA on it and uh, <laughs> <laughs> well yeah it so. was a different time back yeah. then you could probably, you could probably still find Cruising USA in some bowling alleys Dude, these the days get ga- the uh, gas station at the end of my road has a disused barber shop beside of it and in that barber shop there's a Cruising USA cabinet I thought about <laughs> breaking into it and stealing it just so that I could burn it. <laughs> But uh, I, I, I haven't. <laughs> Cruising awesome. USA hat. Oh, I was oh. going to say, I could see like the surveillance camera, you know, yeah. that like, really fuzzy black yeah. and white camera. And then all of a sudden this truck backs in and knocks <laughs> the wall down. <laughs> and it's just uh, this guy. Uh, it. True, <laughs> true story, guys. The uh, A Walmart that's no longer open had an Altered Beast cabinet in its front uh, little uh, lobby area. And I would play it and get aggravated, so I hit it with my knee. And apparently they, so they put a car alarm on it, because I hit it with my knee one time, and it went off, and I took off running out of Walmart. Like, oh my god, what the hell's going on? <laughs> Wait, Rob, there's a Walmart that closed? Well, a yeah. bigger one opened, like yeah, a block yeah, that, down that, the road. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, I skipped chemistry uh, one year. <laughs> yeah, several times. <laughs> I, 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 skip, I skipped chemistry one day, honestly. Uh, to go play Cruise in USA because someone told me that the in the Commons they had uh, Daytona USA. I'm like, yes, I love Daytona USA, and of course it was Cruise in USA, and I was disappointed. I, 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 I played uh, Miss Pac Man instead, and some Mortal Kombat too. I can't tell you how many uh, classes were skipped in in order of a uh, like death matching in the cafeteria or library at my college. It's like, hey, school issue laptops. Where's that the <laughs> dorks at? They're not in class anymore. Score! <laughs> but uh, you, you mentioned death matching. That that's one of the, that was the probably the biggest innovation of the N sixty four was yes. the uh, four player built in. Uh, yeah, I mean that you know other consoles have borrowed that since then, but that was the first one that really did it and did it well because no one else after that really gave a rat's behind that you could do for you know four player four way on it. Because it wasn't I mean, that great, but you know, you beggar well, Nintendo. You had a Nintendo sixty four. I mean, you weren't expecting great. Well, let's face it. Somewhere <laughs> there's still an, a basement with a bunch of dudes playing De- GoldenEye Deathmatch. Yeah, oh, there's no question. That's true. That's true. And I'm not talking about the new one either. I'm talking about <laughs> they have been playing this for like fifteen years, and they're still like. And there are these-
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that was fun. Uh, nobody knew exactly what to call it or, you know, what, what it was going to be about. Then when it became the Nintendo 64, we also found out, of course, without question, that it was going to be a cartridge based system. And that um, didn't. So, so uh, back Sega, in the day, do you guys the, the remember? Sega Saturn? The Saturn was out. There's the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn, yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm a bad Sega fanboy. I should have mentioned them. I should have mentioned them. But uh, yes, so when, when the, and I remember this, like in magazines, there was kind of a healthy debate then, and kind of like a sense of, this is a bad idea to do carts at this point. Um, but Nintendo did it. They stuck by it. And I remember that one of their big selling points, one of the big ways that they rationalized carts was load time oh that yeah one of the big things like no load time it's a cart that's why it's better yeah that's- like i remember in nintendo power they had like a picture of a turtle and a picture of a space shuttle it being like this is the difference guys and you're like <laughs> and in hindsight you're like you know those things don't really fly fast <laughs> <laughs> they don't fly very well either and and also thought um Quake for Nintendo 64 had to load. Actually, I, I may be wrong, but I remember um, Star Wars Rogue Squadron having some delay between mission selection and actually playing. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't Nintendo 64, but uh, Street Fighter Alpha 2 on the SNES had load between rounds. Captain America and the Avengers on Super Nintendo had to load. Why would you play it on Super <laughs> Nintendo? It was better on the Genesis. Because I had the Super Nintendo was it, at the Was time. it even out on the Super Nintendo? <laughs> yeah, it was out. Really? I don't remember huh. it. Sorry. No, I, I, I definitely kind of remember that. It'd start the level, and it'd go black, and you hear, Avengers! And then, like, a second later, it would start. God, what a great game. Not really. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so let's talk games real quick. And uh, money. Lots of money. So, uh, speaking of carts, carts are not cheap. Uh, they back are then, now. especially. The <laughs> yeah, they are. The world. They're about 15 bucks at the uh, record store now. <laughs> um, but, okay, so while most PlayStation games rarely went over 50 bucks back then, the N64 games could reach 80 bucks. Yeah, um, I remember that pretty well. One of them, Zelda. So the first, the first release oh of Zelda, God. 80 bucks, buddy. 80 bucks. I, I, Zelda is one of the rare games, Ocarina of Time is one of the rare games that I pre-ordered. And uh, it's one of the. It, it's honestly the last game that wasn't a fighting game or a racing game or Halo that I actually finished. Um, that was 1990 freaking eight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, I, not a Castlevania game. I, I do finish. I do play through the Castlevania games on the DS and the Game Boy Advance. But Zelda just sucked it out of me. I I, I did it for like four days, four and a half days, and um, and I've never been able to finish a Zelda game since. <sighs> But I am looking forward to it on the 3DS. Like, really, really bad. Yeah, the, the 3DS has a lot of, dare I say, N64 qualities in a good way. Yeah. Which, so, you know. The DS originally, that was like, hey, it's like the N64 portable. And now it's like, hey, it's the N64 portable in 3D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a plateau. But yeah, eight, uh, games were expensive. I didn't have that many games on the Oh, neither, neither did I. I remember, I think the most expensive one I got was like $68, and even that was really difficult to manage. I, I actually only had GoldenEye. I had um, Super Mario 64, of course. Um, I got a cheap copy of Ridge Racer 64, Blast Core 64. Oh, I remember that one, too. And God, um, <laughs> I think I had WCW... Versus NWO or something. On it. But those, you know, they, those games were good. They were they really, were. they were really good. Yeah, they were fun. You know, uh, they were fun. I, I, I'm, I'm undecided on getting the latest WWE game, but it's got Macho Man in it. So, yeah, yep. So, so Brian, did you have like Superman sixty four? No. <laughs> <laughs> Even you as know, an oddie, 
it's probably not worth having. No. The, one of the cool <laughs> things about um, okay, uh, so that brings us to uh, go ahead, Rob, and then we'll then we'll start talking about the best games for N64. Well, well, I'll say one of the cool things about the N64 is that when the game went to clearance for like nine bucks, it was usually when you discovered a gem you never would have noticed before because of the pricing of the games. It's like I got Body Harvest for like nine bucks at Toys R Us. I was like, well, this can't be too bad. And it's like it was really weird. It was Rockstar's like first open map type game. You know, stuff like that, like, you never, you know, like, this will never catch on, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know like, no one wanted to play it then, and there, you kind of think about it. Hey, Rockstar made that game that was like an open sandbox that no one wanted to play. I guess when you throw prostitutes in, it changes. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there are always games you never really, there are games you never really expected to see on the system. Uh, like Triplet and I were talking, Chris Triplet from uh, Fanboy Versus and I were talking about uh, Resident Evil 2. Why doesn't he ever come on the show anymore? I I don't know. Hey, this is like the show for him too, since he does nothing but play video games. So, I, I yeah. know. Yeah, he's missing out tonight. That's true. He, this is his show because he loves the N sixty four more than I do. Mm, mm. So oh uh, yeah, so Resident I, Evil and the N sixty four. I mean, that's just something that you would have never expected. Yeah, is that what because you're because yeah. it includes all the full motion video and stuff. They squeezed uh -huh. it all onto a cartridge. It's weird. Yeah, <laughs> and it is weird. Yeah, that's one. Of, that's one of the last. I guess games and, and they expanded some of the memory so the capacity of that cart was a little bit bigger but oh, of course they, they, it added. they added ram to the system for turok 64 or turok Ooh, yes. 2, turok 2 yes nice awesome awesome stuff okay so what were some of the best games i mean obviously mario and mario, mario golden and zelda yeah mario is prob mario zelda probably the definition of game changer in video games mm -hmm. yeah golden eye <laughs> golden eye was a d Decent for 1996, 97, 98, but now it just doesn't hold up at all. Yeah, it's been so far past in quality. I, I tried to play. Uh, I tried to play. I guess the Superior Perfect Dark uh, a couple of years ago, and I'm sorry those those games are old. C certain games are timeless. Yeah, they show their they show 1990 really quickly. Yeah, yeah, a shooter 1990 shooters. Um, on the, Do not on, age on, on consoles, they age. <laughs> well, yeah. you can, well, you can go back and play Quake One, and it's still fun, or Quake Two, and it's still amazing. No, not not so much anything on the N sixty four. That's a shooter. Sorry. Now, what about Star Fox? Chat brings up Star, Star Fox. Star Fox is Star Fox is a good game. I, I like Star Fox, but it, it never the not big thing about Star Fox is it introduced the Rumble Pack, and I, the game never really held that much mustard with me. I like it. But um, it 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 wasn't as revolutionary as say Star Fox uh, on the S on the SNES. Yeah, I mean I I played Star Fox sixty four for a while, but I, there was no real interest to keep with it. Yeah, I mean it's not one of the it's not one of those games. It's like wow, like uh, what Shadows of the Empire or whatever. That's like yeah. It's like at the time it's amazing. Um, now it kind of looks like crap, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Everything. Well, I, I, the Star Wars game for you. It's great at the time, but. Oh well, super. Uh, the, all the Super NES games are still pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. but you know, Super NES games are kind of timeless. They are timeless. And, right? mm -hmm. timeless. Uh, they have that technology and that look that's more timeless. Yeah. Since the N sixty four was kind of on that that the crossroads of three D and two D and all that I, stuff. I, as much as I love, go ahead, XV. I think we're more uh, quickly critical of 3D because of how quickly it advanced over the last decade or so. Yeah, if you, I mean, you're pushing, like, uh, I, the, the, the PS1 pushed, um, uh, I think, 150,000 polygons per second. Because that, that, that was a metric that actually mattered back then. The uh, Super NES actually, while a technically more powerful system, I think, had a lower uh, polygon per second count. I think it was like 100,000. But it introduced uh, all the shaders and stuff and the um, texture mapping and things that the really poor and Z-buffering and stuff that the the PS1 couldn't do. Uh, but the games, I love Super Mario 64. It's, mm -hmm. it, it's one of the greatest games of all time, but I can't play it on the N64. I have to play it on the on the Wii in emulation. Uh, the Wii, the Wii, if you, if you want to go back and play the N64, don't. <laughs> there get, 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 get a Wii get, get a Wii and play the games on the virtual console you will think yourself actually I'm more yes where they improve the graphics for hey some time passes since it might look like crap now what, what, can you repeat that Rob you, you, you're breaking <clears throat> yeah you're pitching dog his, his dongle kind of you know 
My dongle his dongle what? Off. His dongle's broken. Yeah. <laughs> dongle is what? To me, um, probably one better way to play Mario 64 now is the yes, version that's the way I can improve the visual just because I'm like, hey, if we put this back out, you want to make sure it doesn't look like crap now that it's for a few years? Yeah, I mean, that, that's probably a good point, too. Yes. Control. I think blindly, not really sure what Rob just said. <laughs> just agree with him. So, just so agree with him. There's some varying opinions on Majora's Mask. Um, some people think that it's better than Ocarina of Time. What do you? Oh, I don't think so. Well, I don't know. I, I I would hate to think nostalgia paints my impressions of stuff. Clearly, it does. But I don't know. I we think I enjoy Transformers podcast. Of course, it does. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, the room I'm in is full of toys, and I'm. 30. Well, we can't really see them, but we'll take your word for Man. it. You're gonna have to take my word for it, I guess. Here, let me see. Let me tilt up. Let me see. Nice. Is that gonna work? Let's see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, Ocarina of Time, I just has like a, I guess, a bigger place in my heart. I don't know. Ocarina of Time for it. Where's the man? So what? I feel like it's not as good. It definitely. In. He's being Comcastic. He is. He's he's beatboxing Com- for all we Comcastic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> that's right. That is not hey, fire. So Rob, try disconnecting and, and rejoin the call. But we'll, we'll we'll hold down the fort while you do that. Yeah. Okay, Get I'm the here. hell off the air. That's what all we're right. saying. But, but uh, yeah, while we're waiting for Rob to uh, straighten his dongle back out. Um, <laughs> Uh, you were talking about uh, Super Mario 64, which, you know, that it has staying power. And really, for me, every 3D Mario game since then, been a, I've been looking for another Mario 64, and it's got, just not there. Oh, God, Mario Sunshine was such a letdown. Um, and, and for me, so was Mario Galaxy. I know a lot of people like it, it's, but... It, Mario Galaxy not, is not... Mario Galaxy is not... It's the spiritual successor to Mario 64, but it is not the mm-hmm. same level of... Uh, uh, it's not It's not as big a leap as Mario 64 was. And, you know, Mario 64 may not be the best Mario game, but it, it's definitely... It may be the best 3D game. It, it's the Mario game I enjoy playing the most, if you don't count Mario Kart 64. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think Mario 64 is definitely one of those games where when people played it, they said, wow, because it's not, it was yeah. nothing, it was like nothing they had ever seen before. Like, we couldn't even like, describe it. We couldn't even describe the gameplay. So, like, they had to play it. They had to like, really sit down and actually understand what I'm talking about. Like, this game is like actually 3D. Hey, Rob, you back? I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Awesome. It sounds, okay. like, he's, he sounds like he's on a Gordon Gecko phone. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Let me. You guys hear me now? You sound fine. Yeah, I know. It's like Rob from the back. Wait, was that your was that your end gauge, Rob? No, that's my Game Boy Advance. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, awesome. Did you buy it new or did you get it on clearance? New. I man, I, I saw it clearance for like forty bucks, and I I, I regret not buying it. I am uh, still kicking myself because I didn't get the uh, Famicom twenty fifth anniversary edition. Because oh, me yes. and this thing was inseparable for a while because it was just the right size to put in a cargo pant. What was the like, what was on the Famicom? I know there's a Famicom version of the SP. What was the Famicom version of that? Uh, it looked like a Famicom controller. It was red. It had a gold faceplate that had the lines and everything. It looked like a Famicom controller. And about the only addition they had was a little pixelated Mario with 25 or whatever on the faceplate. Thing is, it costed more and it come with as many faceplates, so I thought it was kind of a jip, but hindsight, I should have got it. Yeah, oh well. Mm. Some of those European versions are really nice because they got like all these crazy colors that didn't come out here that look really nice. Like green and stuff and purple. Mm. It's a cool console that didn't have it. When we do a show on Game Boys, you're going to. Yeah. 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 You are going to rock that show. You're going to do a college report on Game Boy, okay? Really? Uh, I'm not not lying. I had to do a double marketing. (laughs) Uh, plans and I used the Game Boy because how it was introduced as an adult play thing and a kids play thing in different times. Mm-hmm. That's what I did. <laughs> Fascinating. Nerd <laughs> alert. Coming to you in right. 2011, the Game Boy uh, podcast with Rob, featuring <laughs> Rob, starring Rob. Oh, dude! When the 3DS um, comes out, we're totally doing that. 
Oh or, yeah, there you go, right there. So in March, <laughs> coming to you in March, I think. It's like um, when Rob know. gets his 3DS. It's like Rob's not on the show. What's he doing right now? My <laughs> eyes hurt. I've been playing this all night. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find a way to fake 3D on our podcast, or just have a picture of Rob like leaping out at you. Awesome. Whoa! Whoa! Yeah, we were actually talking about that the other day. What the show would awesome. be like in 3D? Rob would be awesome. poking at us. You know, John, you gotta, you gotta whip up some anaglyph uh, artwork. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> nice. In all hindsight, <laughs> that's probably gonna be the 3DS's biggest challenge is advertising effectively. Yeah. Because it's like, it's in 3D, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we talked about that, what, a couple weeks ago? It's gonna be all about the in store display. Like, this they're gonna past have weekend, to do some I was trying to ass. show a girlfriend it because she's like, no way, yeah, show me. I can't. Why? Because it only works when you look. And I was like, damn, it's going to really suck for them. Because on their site, they're like, whoa, whoa. And that's it. Awesome. Uh, I demand you do that on the Game Boy podcast, on the 3DS podcast. I demand you, like, fall out of your seat at least three times because you just can't handle the 3D. It's too much 3D. Awesome. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, guys, I think I think that wraps it up um, for our Nintendo 64 discussion. An awesome system. Um, we love our Nintendo 64. Oh, again, again, I just want to mention the, the the memory expansion. It was the best and worst, stupidest thing I ever had to do. So you, you think you think you think it's new that uh, Sony is doing the move and all this stuff, and the oh, Xbox yeah. is doing Connect. No, the N64 was the first truly extensible N- Nintendo console. Now the nice. uh, this 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 of course the Sega, uh, Sega Genesis was extensible. But. Uh, before before we wrap up though, uh, you were going to tell us what you had to do to get your Nintendo sixty four. Who? Or no, what you did already? I you told did. Me. Yeah, yeah um, did. it's a cheer wine. It's going to my head. Yes, it's right. Yeah, it's fermented cheer wine. It's oh, not. I'm drinking not cheer wine drunk wine. over here, so just don't mind me. Bear with us. Bear with us. Um, no. Okay, so yes, um, like I said, N64, awesome, um, a cult classic to be sure. Um, so I think that's going to wrap it up for New Sound Wave 64. Um, for our panel of experts, XV, Rob Springer, and Brian Kilby, I am your. Um, your eager, ever eager host, John DeLuna, every week we strive to bring you the best in video game news and discussion, and we will see you next week for New Soundwave 65. Brown. With your hosts, John DeLuna, Brian Gilby, XV, Lady Rick, Weebo. Rob Springer. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Check out all our videos at tfvideo.net. Like the podcast? Tell your friends. New Soundwave is a Radio Free Cybertron production. Copyright 2010 Radio Free Cybertron.